दार्शा खुपे पाती थाम स्वकार्मा बसगम अजाम पास तक एको बने खासचित विचिन्वन प्रियमात्मना ददार्शकु पेपातिथाम स्वकार्मा वसगम अजाम भास्त एको बने खास्चित चिन्वन प्रियमात्मना दार्शकु पेपातिथाम स्वकार्मा बसगम अजाम भास्तो एको बने खास्चित विचिन्वन प्रियमात्मना दार्शकु पेपातिथाम स्वकार्मा बसगम अजाम भास्त एको बने खास्चित प्रियम आत्मना हा दार्शकु पे पतिताम बास्त एको बने कास्चित जनवन प्रियम आत्मना हा दार्शकु पे पतिताम तदार वसगम अगम मातजीस वास्ते एको मने काश्चित चेन्वन प्रयामात मना तदार शकुपे पाती तम सोकार मा वसगम अजाम बास्त एको वने कास्चित विचिन्वन प्रियमात मना हा तदार्शा कुपे पातिताम स्वकार्म आबासगम अजाम बस्ता गुट एका वन वने इन अ फॉरेस्ट Kaschit sam vichinvan searching for food priyam very dear atmanaha for himself the darsha saw by chance kupe within a well patitam fallen Swakarma Vasagam under the influence of the results of fruitive activities. Ajam a she goat translation. While wandering in the forest eating to satisfy his senses, a he goat by chance approached the well in which he saw a she goat standing helplessly, having fallen into it by the influence of of the results of fruitive activities, purport by Srila Prabhupada. Here Maharaj Jayati compares himself to a he-goat and Devayani to a she-goat and describes the nature of man and woman. Like a he-goat, a man searches for sense gratification, wandering here and there, and a woman without the shelter of a man or husband is like a she-goat that has fallen into a well. Without being cared for by a man, a woman cannot be happy. Indeed, she is just like a she-goat that has fallen into a well and is struggling for existence. Therefore, a woman must take shelter of her father, as Devayani did, when under the care of Sukracharya. And then the father must give the daughter in charity to a suitable man, or, or a suitable man should help the woman by placing her under the care of a husband. This is shown vividly 
by the life of Devayani. When King Yayati delivered Devayani from the well, she felt great relief and requested Yayati to accept her as his wife. But when Mars Yayati accepted Devayani, he became too attached and had sex life not only with her, but with others like Sarmista. Yet still, he was dissatisfied. Therefore, one should retire by force from such family life as Yayati's. When one is fully convinced of the de degradating nature of worldly family life, one should completely renounce this way of life, take it sannyas, and engage himself fully in the service of the Lord. Then's one, then one's life will be successful. Bhastekavane kasjid vichinbam priyam atmanaha dadarsha kupepatitam sukarma vasagamajam while wandering in the forest, eating to satisfy his senses. A he-goat by chance approached a well, in which he saw a she-goat standing helplessly, having fallen into it by the influence of the results of fruitive activities. Om Jnana Timirandasya, Gyananjana Shalakaya, Chaksur Unmilitanjena, Tasmai Sri Guru Venama. I was born in the darkness of ignorance, and my spiritual master opened my eyes with the torchlight of knowledge. I offer my respectful obeisances to his lotus feet. So herein, Marjayati is explaining with his metaphor that the he-goat and the she-goat, Prabhupada states in the purport, the she-goat was very unhappy without the instruction and shelter of a she-goat, of a he-goat. Uh, of course, today, the she-goat can be with the she-goat, the he-goat with the he-goat, the he-goat and the she-goat. Very complicated. This is 5,000 years later. Uh, and the he-goat, nowadays, of course, also, he's very unhappy without the shelter of the she-goat. So this is worldly situation. Uh, for persons that are Krishna conscious, uh, as we heard nicely put yesterday by Prabhupada Prabhu. They're in a transcendental position to this Varnashram Dharm. They're finished with he goat and she goat. They're he devotee and she devotee. And the he devotee helps the she devotee, and the she devotee helps the he devotee. Prabhupada said, redoubled strength. But if one is in a position where he's just a he devotee, or she's in a position, she's just a she devotee, then there's no loss. Actually, some of us can come to the conclusion we're being saved from so much difficulty and that you engage fully in the transcendental service of the Lord. As he goat or she goat, he devotee, she devotee. This is our business. Uh, it isn't that the uh, Srimad Bhagavatam or Prabhupada is trying to point out women so many places in Srimad Bhagavatam and in Prabhupada's books where he points out uh, that men and women are equal in terms of the Lord's vision and devotional service there is no difference actually in the old days which have been criticized to some extent on uh, unfairly. In the old days, the women would go on Sankirtan and do more book distribution than the men. Isn't it, Mataji? You were there. You did it. You did it. And it was a competition with the men or the women do more Sankirtan service. And this service was glorious. 
there may have been some difficulty. There may have been few oddballs who kicked people at the airports and called them ill names. Even recently, within recent times, but the service that was performed for the pleasure of Prabhupada is transcendental, antiseptic, and prophylactic. It is like Srimad Bhagavatam itself. And therefore, we should be extremely careful that we understand. Prabhupada had said years ago, if you stop the book distribution, there'll be no more Hari Hari Bull. That's a quote. That all of you are here today because of the glorious book distribution that took place when you were children, when you were in the womb, before you were born, when you were a dirty old man in another body, or somebody in another body before you were born. And you came to this world, most of you uh, looking out were probably born uh, later than 1980, after Prabhupada had left the planet. Would make you, what, 35 years old? So most of you, you're all born. Who was born before 1980? Prabhupada disciples, don't raise your hand. We know you had to be. Only a couple people. Everyone else was born after 1980. And this movement was established very strong by Prabhupada and his instructions and those faithful servants who engaged uh, in that instruction of Prabhupada. And Prabhupada gave instruction to many people. He didn't give instruction to one person. Not everyone goes around and broadcasts their instruction from Prabhupada. They have it within their heart as their life and soul. What is that verse Prabhupada said? He heard from Srila Bhakti Siddhanta, and when he studied that verse, he took it at, at devotional service in the order of the spirit, spiritual master is one's life and soul. Say it loud. Guru Nandana, Bahushaka Yanantascha, Buddha Vyavasayanam. What's the first line? Vyavasayatmika Buddhi. One's intelligence has to be fixed in the order of the spiritual master. We were in, I said at the Sunday feast, most of you were not there uh, two weeks ago, a week and a half ago. We received a letter that was in 1974, before your birth. We were young, young men. Not that young, but pretty young. We were in Spokane, Washington for the World's Fair, International World's Fair in Spokane. It was in April and May of 1974. Savas Prabhu was there, newly initiated. Naikatma Prabhu was there, also initiated. We were there organizing the Sankraton in 74. And letters were written, two letters, to Srila Prabhupada. The letter was inviting Srila Prabhupada to come to the World's Fair uh, and speak and do kirtan and telling Srila Prabhupada of our book distribution results. We wrote that letter organize the book distribution results as you Sankirtan van leaders do so nicely and sent it to Srila Prabhupada. And Prabhupada's response, we have this paper in a, uh, what do you call it, frame for 41 years. According to your letter, you suggest I come and speak in the middle of August. But in order to ensure good attention at the event, 
attendance at the event. This was by Hari Basari, the first paragraph. In order to sell the tickets and make profit, you think it best if I appear uh, with a popular music group. This was 1974. Uh, those arrangements make us too dependent on other parties. We should not be dependent on others, but should present our own program. Since there are so many conditions and risks involved, better you yourselves do as much as possible to spread Krishna consciousness there by distribution of literature, kirtan, and prasadam. And that will be as effective as my personally coming. Besides, I must be in Vrindavan for Jamastami, so my schedule makes it difficult for me to be in Spokane, Washington. And then in response to our letter, I'm very keen on the distribution of my books, and I'm very indebted to all of you for your untiring efforts to see that every man and woman in America get one of my books. If they simply read one page, even if they do nothing else, they can become perfect. I've read the plans of Ramaswar and so-and-so to attend the fair and distribute to the thousands of people who are coming whatever transcendental tactics you leaders think best for distributing the books you can employ. Please keep me informed of your progress as the fair develops. Your ever well-wisher, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami, April 20th, 1974. I'm very keen on the distribution of my books, and I'm very indebted to all of you for your untiring efforts to see that every man and woman in the United States get one of my books. So, Salas Prabhu, Matatma Prabhu were there, and other devotees heard this instruction from Prabhupada that was to all of the Sankirtan devotees, and they took it as their life and soul. I associated with Nikotman Savas for many, many years before coming to Los Angeles and serving under them. Uh, and I never saw anybody. I was side by side with Nikotma maybe 12 years and Vaishya Prabhu. 12 years without stop. We were materially tired of each other but spiritually, transcendentally, very happy to be in the association. And I never saw anyone walk away from Nikatma in a bad mood. And we were so strict because of the sannyasi we were working under, we weren't allowed to approach any women on our sankirtan in Chicago. And one woman came up to me and bought maybe 10 books. And I went downstairs to the locker where Nikatma was also loading up at the airport locker for more books in O'Hare. And he looked at me. I think he said, Nunam Pramata Kurute Vikarma. What are you doing? I said, oh, this... Uh, Mataji wanted our books. She's really excited. She donated $50, got 10 books. And he said, I think he reported me to Tripurari Swami because we weren't allowed. That was sense gratification. No talking. Of course, that changed shortly thereafter. Uh, and people were walking away in ecstasy. No question. We were side by side with Svavas Prabhu in 1975 in Atlanta, Georgia, distributing hundreds of books. Prabhupada says in that letter, your untiring efforts. Svavas was the Sankirtan leader of Atlanta, Georgia. We were told by Triparari Swami, you can't talk to him because he's a householder was a little fanatic and insane. But we snuck around, Nikatma also, because they had grown up together for umpteen 
years. They were brothers uh, from the same mother. And uh, I broke the rules and associated with Savas freely. I felt it good association, unlike the so-called leader had been preaching to us. And he, Savas arranged for the devotees for some untiring service. Confirmed. We all went out nine o'clock every morning in a milk truck, wasn't it? It was milk truck. There was no milk in it, but maybe milk sweets. We went out on Sankirtan eight in the morning, nine in the morning. And weekdays, every day, no day off. There's no vacation. This is Krishna consciousness. We came home at six o'clock in the milk truck after we actually stopped at noon, one o'clock, and went to the baggage claim in a terminal where no flight was coming in, they had arranged. And we sat on the floor with wax paper or paper plates and ate a scoop of kitri and two japatis. Maybe a couple, I think eight chickpeas. Six, six chickpeas. That was it. Then we went back on Sangratan, six o'clock, ran back to the temple, went to Sundar Arti, went to Bhagavad Gita class, out the next morning, six, Friday, twice a month. We went out six in the morning, and we stayed out until about eight, when one of the devotees would run to a drugstore and get sour cream, dates, and honey, or to a grocery store, bring it back, and we stayed up twice a month for the midnight rush in Atlanta. Nikatma was also there sometimes, huh? So Vas arranged that. Wood will say that, you'll hear. At midnight, the rush would come in. We all had just eaten after 14, 15 hours of Sankirtan. Offered date, sour cream, and uh, honey. And everyone would come back, 100, 130 books, 150 books. That one famous day, how many books you did, Savas? 480, 280 hardback books. And Mother Tadit, at the time, I was there with, traveling with Vaisheshika Prabhu, who no one would go away. Sometimes people would criticize. He'd call people over. Mr. Wilson, he'd see on their luggage. It would say Wilson. He'd call them over. Mr. Wilson, is that you? And they, he was like 16. We were 20, 21. And they'd say, yeah, who are you? Him and his wife, old man, would be there. It's Skippy, your old paper boy. And he'd go, why, Skippy? You look fantastic. You still got that bicycle? And he'd engage in this long conversation. Somehow he'd figure out what town they were from, from the luggage or the, the flight. And he'd say, yeah, I, those were the best days of my life, bringing you your morning paper, bringing you and the good little lady your morning paper. And they would give him, I tried it once or twice, and nobody fell for it. <laughs> they looked at me and said, you know, what are you, the son of some mafioso? Get out of here. Somehow, Vaishya Prabhu, he was able to convince them that he was Skippy the paper boy. Isn't it, Nikatma? Every, every other person. And they all took. It was amazing. Totally amazing. So later, some people criticized the Prabhupada that sometimes devotees use lying lines on Sankirtan, just like Skippy. So Prabhupada says, I don't know what they're saying, and I'm not saying they haven't any, done anything wrong. But he said, just like our, what is his name? And uh, they said, Triparari, yes. He goes, the lady asked him, is there anything in your books about the energy crisis? 
And he said, oh, yes. He said, so you big, more, more, you big uh, moralist, you think he has lied to her because our books aren't about the energy crisis. But actually, it is, Prabhupada said. They are about energy crisis. If you tell them on Sankirtan, these books are how to, fi how to defeat terrorism in the world. It is. These books tell about global warming. They do. In a very spiritual way. But they do. That's a fact. So Prabhupada gave the example. Just like I am ordering, you think he lied. You're a big moralist. You are bigger than uh, him. Prabhupada meaning himself or Krishna. Prabhupada said, Krishna gave instruction to Arjun. He's off the chariot, Radheya. Kill him now. His chariot wheel stuck in the mud. Kill him. And he did. He hesitated, but he did. Uh, Bhima was instructed, instructed to hit below the belt. Even today, you can't hit below the belt in MMA or boxing. Illegal. One point deduction, isn't it? Something. If you do it two times, three times, disqualified. But especially those days, he was fighting with club, Duryodhana. He hit him be below the belt because Duryodhana was vincible, not invincible, right below the belt because he had met Krishna before going to be blessed by his mother who was taking off the blindfold of so many years to bless the form of her son, the body of her son, with invincibility. And Krishna saw him. He said, you're going to see your mother? Yes, she's going to bless me with invincibility. I mean, he said, well, how will she do that? Well, if I take my clothes and she looks upon my body because her eyes have been so chaste for so many years, being married to my father, uh, Dhritarashtra, who was blind from birth, that she will give the great blessing. And Krishna said, you want to go see your mother naked? That's not a very good idea. At least you should wear some gumcha, some cloth to cover your lower body because Krishna knew that if I make his lower body vulnerable, invincible, not invincible, then uh, Bhima can defeat him. And Yudhisthira was told, to say, Asvatam, the elephant, is dead. So the Dronacharya went off his chariot and stopped defeating the Pandavas and the Pandava army. So all these instructions Prabhupada said were given by Krishna in Mahabharata. Uh, but the Pandavas, because they were righteous men, they hesitated. Arjun hesitated. Yudhisthira hesitated because they were thinking, what is the right thing to do? And Krishna had given instruction, but they hesitated. And because of that hesitation, they all had to see hell, Prabhupada describes. Temporary. But they didn't go right to Vaikuntha. They didn't go right to the spiritual world. First, they had to see Hell. This is Mahabharata. So Krishna is giving instruction. Spiritual master is giving instruction. We take it as our life and soul. We try to make everyone uh, happy and peaceful. As soon as they see devotees, they're at once struck. Because they see devotees so serious and sincere, they're at once struck. We were at O'Hare Airport. I was with Naikatma Prabhu at O'Hare Airport. We were stopping people, and one businessman came up. Don't look in their eyes, don't look in their eyes, don't look in their eyes. And then the guy would look in their eyes, shake hands. Don't, don't touch him, don't shake his hand. So I walked up, he seemed like a decent guy. 
I said, why are you saying these things? He said, because as soon as people look in your guys' eyes, they at once come to you, 99%. And once you shake their hand and they hear something come out of your mouth, they're finished. They have to take a book. That's a fact, they said. Of course, I was distributing Vaisasika, Naikatma Prabhu, such sweet devotees from Chicago. And one gentleman came up to me and said, what are you doing out here? I said, well, distributing my spiritual master's books. We're in United. He said, no, 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 what are you doing out here? I said, selling Bhagavad Gita and Srimad Bhagavatam. He said, no, 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 I'm looking around. All these guys are choir boys. What are you doing out here? So I had to go take a break, go in the bathroom, look in the mirror, try to look a little more choir boy-like. I guess I couldn't hide my demoniac birth and nature. It became a stigma for years to come. It's Sir and the choir boys. They were all Catholic boys of bright-eyed and completely transcendental looking. And I was the, uh, what do you call, bad seed or dark, the dark horse, the dark seed, the dark seed. Uh, but I thought about it for a few seconds and realized I still have to distribute my spiritual master's books. We were in Atlanta with Sovas Prabhu, Vaishasika Prabhu was my partner at the time. And Tadit Mataji was distributing books. It was uh, summer of 75. And she was pregnant with a beloved child. I think she went out, uh, I saw her, go out till her, the end of the eighth month, wasn't it? Maybe beginning of ninth. That was pregnant with Acharya. And after Acharya was born, Maybe two weeks. He was born September 1st, 1975. And she was so sincere and serious and dedicated to Prabhupada. Within three weeks, she wrote a letter to Prabhupada explaining the name she had picked and telling Prabhupada the Sankirtan results of the men and women in the Atlanta airport, and her Sankraton. She went on Sankraton, don't try this at home. Two weeks after giving birth, three weeks. The letter was three weeks, and she had Sankraton results. I saw her pushing baby Acharya, and she told me, yesterday she told Savas and myself, she was in so much anxiety to distribute books, Every few hours, I don't know how many hours, you have to go and feed the baby in the bathroom. She was breastfeeding the baby, and she was in anxiety one day. I got to get out there. It's Friday. It's huge. I'm missing sales. She was doing 30, 40, 50 books a day. So while she's feeding Acharya in the bathroom, changing the diaper, she's selling books to women coming out of the bathroom and going in the bathroom. True story. How you can criticize that seva to Prabhupada. Of course, someone might have done something insane, but the majority, 95%, 98% devotees were dedicated life. She wrote a letter to Prabhupada, and he gave his order to her on September 28th of 1975. He wrote to her and a couple other Matajis who were writing. Uh, Srimati Harinam, Srimati Tadi Devi Dasi, and Bhakti De Ana, Atlanta. My dear devotees, please accept my blessing. I am in due receipt of your letter. I thank you very much for the package containing woolen slippers and nice bag for cartels they had made for Prabhupada in her two weeks off. 
They are very nicely done. Regarding the baby Acharya Das, yes, name is approved by me, and it is very nice thing that he was born with umbilical cord wrapped around like sacred thread, like Srila Bhakti Sananta. I'm very pleased to hear about book distribution. I know that Atlanta is a very good place for book distribution, and you are doing it nicely, so please continue. I hope this meets you in good health. Your ever well wisher, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami. What a beautiful letter. And she was back out. Baby was still infant, not toddler, infant. So this is our heritage. This is where ISKCON came from. These devotees didn't leave for 10 years. They didn't go get some job and try to make money. They worked every day and still working every day since 1972-73 for Srila Prabhupada, uh, taking his order to preach Krishna consciousness as their life and soul and making it possible for us and all of you, Kijai, to engage in this transcendental Hare Krishna movement. So uh, we don't minimize the service. Prigupati Prabhu was out in the summer of 76. We were traveling together, and he used a line that was little questionable. In West Virginia, we were going to see Prabhupada in New Vrindavan, so we were traveling around West Virginia, and he used kind of a shaky line. He made it up because everyone was plagued by mosquitoes in West Virginia and different types of bugs. It was an epidemic of bugs. And we were doing sticks of incense with Prabhupada's books, some of us. And he was going up to each car. We were in Bluefield, West Virginia. Whoever heard of Bluefield, West Virginia, raise your hand. Brigopati and me. You heard? I think it's the southern edge, southwestern edge of West Virginia. A little town, a little village. But Chaitanya Mahaprabhu has given his order, Prite Vite Yache Yani Nagaradi Gram. In every town and village you carry out, spread this Krishna consciousness. So we went to the strange people. We don't think they're strange anymore, but at that time, kind of different type people. A Bluefield, West Virginia, I was having a hard time. I could imitate the accent, but I couldn't get into the consciousness. Brigupati came up to me and said, he did one first day, 450 Lakshmi points, I think 60 books, going car to car in shopping centers. I said, what do you say? He said, I go with a stick of incense, and I say, you know, we have a big bug problem here in West Virginia. This really keeps them away. And he was so serious and sincere with his bug chasing material that everyone was buying. They looked in his eyes, they looked in his face. They were at once struck. And they all bought, ultimately, without their knowledge, they ended up buying little books, big books, $450, $500 worth of books. So we all became bug chasing salesmen for that day. And everyone did a lot of book distribution. So a big moralist may think, incense doesn't keep them away. I'm not sure. Maybe it does. We've never tested it. But he wanted Prabhupada's books to be distributed. So he gave some presentation. You can't criticize that. That's glorious activity. So we should be aware of our past and be thankful and grateful to all the devotees who have established 
this movement in any way, books, prashadam, and harinam, making it so that Prabhupada is personally present. Prabhupada said, it will be as, as good as my personally being here. If you distribute prashad, the holy names, and book distribution, it's as good as my being here. Prabhupada is here, 2015. All of you are doing wonderful seva to establish the Hare Krishna movement and Prabhupada's books. Uh, in this land of ours. We've been given the order. We're passing the order down to all of you. Prabhupada is thanking you for your untiring efforts to see that every man and woman in the United States gets a book, and this is our life and soul. Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai. <laughs>